Praise the Lamb of God. Let me share my screen. Praise God. Drop it. Let it go. It's over. Just drop it. Just let it go. Okay? Be still and know. Now, we all heard this, this familiar passage of Scripture. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. And, you know, we talked about this before, about this be still thing. It's uh, strong concordance. H, 7503. That word, be still, is rafa. means to sink, relax, sink down, let drop, let it go. Let it fall, think, dropping, like think about basically dropping a huge weight. The ancient Hebrew of ra is the pictorial of a man's head, or fa, which is a pictorial of an open mouth. Combined, they mean man open. Man open signifying a person opening his or her mouth to receive medicines and nourishment. Like, ah, nothing you can do about it. If you gotta take some Benadryl or some castor oil, ah, open up, let your mouth sink, drop it, let it drop open and just receive it. Also to uh, think about this, and men, we are notorious for this. We've got 20 garbage bags, uh, not garbage bags, uh, grocery bags in the trunk. I promise you, we're not making two trips. We're going to carry as much bags as humanly possible on one load as fast as we can. And we will sit there and look like we're just, you guys, where, by God's grace, we are not, not making two trips. We're going to make it one trip. But then when you got all those bags in your arm, by the time you get to the kitchen or the, to the floor, you like you go, ugh, and you drop everything. That's what it means. It means... Right, right. It needs to just drop it, let it go. All that weight, all the anxiety, all the worry, all that, all that uh, uh, you know, confusion. Just drop it, let it go. Open your mouth and go ah, and receive your medicine. That's what Rafa. That's what it means. So Rafa means to heal. To heal. Mystic revelation. The archangel Raphael means God heals. Yahweh Rapha, it means the Lord who heals. So you can see how that word, be still, it has a connotation of healing. Just letting go and receiving. Drop it. Just let it go. Look at Psalms 46.10. Let it go. Drop it. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And the passing translations is interesting because it says, Surrender your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving. And you will see that I am God. I am the God above all the nations. And I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. And that right there is an encouraging word. It is an encouraging word. Because as much as, much as, as God is going to tell us, as he tells his sheep, as he, as he leads sheep by the still waters, He's also telling us, be still. There's nothing you can do. You can't add another hour to your day. You can't add another foot to your height. So just drop it. Let it go. And let, let God do what he's going to do. Surrender your anxiety. Be silent and stop your striving. Let go and let God. Adding a brick perspective, Mark chapter 4 verse 39 says, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Said in another way, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Stop it, no more. Let it go, drop it. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You see how that word has so much of an implication of like, Calm down. Just back off, Tarzan. Let it go. Get off your high horse. Stop worrying. Stop with anxiety. I got this. And I got you. But now, to continue on with the new stuff, Psalms 46.10 continues, and no. No. Now that we read the first part, be still and know that I am God. But I want to get the second part. And know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen, I'll be exalted in the earth. Interesting enough, and no 
it means I acknowledge or know of him, right? That's what we're, we're led to believe or have been uh, uh, the assumption of that the word know uh, just means basically an acknowledgement. Oh, I, I, I can identify. Yeah, I, I know who God is. It's like saying, oh, I know who, uh, you know, Denzel Washington is. I, I know. No, you don't know him. You know of him. That's what we think it means. Be still and know that I am God. So we look at God as and say, oh, yeah, okay, God, okay. Yeah, okay. And then by him being um, acknowledged, exalted over the heathen and exalted over all the earth, we kind of, that, that solidifies that little shallow end of the pool word of knowing. Oh, but it's so much more deeper than that. It's a big old nope. It doesn't just mean that. That word no, strong coordinates, H, 3045. It, the word is yada. Yes, that's correct. That's where we get the word yada, yada, yada. So when, when you hear it, when you see a Jewish person and they go, you know, I'm telling a story. And, you know, you know, the girl, you know, yada, 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 because it's to symbolize, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Um, actually, the, you know, we say in English, yada, 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 but it's yada, yada, yada. But it's, it's more fun to say yada, yada, yada. So in that yada, 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 it means to know. So when you hear that, uh, you know, two plus two is yada, yada, yada. You know, and we just kind of, the assumption of knowing. But interesting enough, the primitive root word of yada, it means to know, but properly to ascertain by seeing. Ascertain by seeing. Used in a great variety of senses, figuratively, literally, euphemistically, and inferentially. Including observation, care, recognition. Acknowledge, yes, there's the actual word acknowledge, but acquaintance of a surety. Meaning, you've got personal connection, personal contact. You've shaken Obama's hand. You've actually hugged Denzel. You know Holly Berry personally. Teach, can tell, understand, have understanding. There is a dialogue, there's a communication. There is a knowing that is known by connection. To know as an intimacy. We use that, like I said, the term is used in a great variety of senses, liberty and figuratively, euphemistically and fruitionally. We read that in Genesis 4.1, and Adam knew Yada, Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Basically, that word, you know, as we talked about, talked about this before, the Jews are very, very um, modest, very naive, very, you know, they don't like to, you know, be salacious in any way. So they like to use a lot of euphemisms. So when Adam knew his wife, it is meant to say that he was intimate um, and they had sexual relations with Eve and she conceived the Burkane. So they would just put, and Adam, like, yada, 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 you know, they, you know, they, they did it, you know. And so that's where it comes from. So Adam knew, yada, Eve. Also to know is as a revelation. John, Jonah 1 7. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come, let us cast lots that we may know for who caused this evil is upon us. So they cast lot, and a lot fell upon Jonah. So that word, still that same word, Yadav, is used for revelation. So we may find out. Find out. There's an intimacy level, there's also a revelation level with this word to know. Also, the word know is used as an assurance. Nahum 1.7, the Bible says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Now, that's interesting, because we're talking about, in Psalms 46, where God says, uh, Be still and know that I am God. But Nahum, it says, And God knows you. So we're talking about relationship. There is a connection. There's a relationship. Now, I can be friends with people on Facebook, but do I, do I know them? I know of them. I know of them. And yes, even most of you guys here, you know, except for a few of you guys that we've met personally over the years, I promise you, we're going to meet you. We're going to get a chance to meet and talk to every single one of you guys. But over the years, our relationship has grown. 
our, 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 our communication has become more intimate. There are things that we have shared, things that we have partnered with, things that we have come together and agreement with. As we begin to know your family and meet, you know, your, 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 your sons and daughters and your parents, as we begin to pray and receive for you. Yes, we've, we've come to know you guys. We've come to realize the relationship that we are together in that knowing. So the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. God is saying, I want that same relationship that you have with Kevin. I want that same connection that you have with Tanya. I want to be able to be in that same place where you can talk about important things and, and deep things like you can with Monique. I want that for myself. I want that. And it's a beautiful, it's so wonderful because we're talking about not just an introduction. We're not just talking about acknowledging um, you know, a like on Facebook. We're talking about that deep, intimate, to where I can kind of give you this look. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it is really interesting because uh, uh, somebody will say something and be gossiping about somebody, and then you, you go, "No, that don't even sound. That don't, that don't even sound like him. He wouldn't say nothing like that. I know that person. They wouldn't say that. They just wouldn't say that. You're making that up because you can recognize because since you know that person by way of revelation and assurance, by way of understanding that person, you know when somebody says some nonsense, you could be the first one to say, no, that's that's not right, that's not true, that's not true. And don't get me wrong, I understand, sometimes we can't be deceived. But that's, well, let's take the bunny trail, shall we? Jesus knew about Judah all along. He knew. But he knew him in that sense to where, from not just from the prophecies, not just from uh, 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 you know, the Old Testament, from the Torah, but because of the communications he had with, Judah, uh, with, with uh, Judas. Judas was the one who said, oh, with the woman with the alabaster box, we could have just went in, we could have sold it in front of the poor. We could have just, uh, and so, you know, the, the, your character comes out. The Bible says uh, your gift will make room for you. Um, but the, your integrity and character will keep you there. Gifts are one thing, integrity and character are another. And the way that can be defined is this. Character is what you do where people can see you on a daily basis. The integrity is the part that no one sees except for God. So yes, God does know us and God sometimes, and some people God knows very well. He knew Judas very well. Had he got a hold of Judas and confronted him and said, dude, I know what you're going to do, what you're going to do, what you're planning to do. And man, brother, I love you, but this is wrong. It's, it's just wrong. It's wrong. Had Jesus done that, Judas, Jesus would have been the savior of Judas and not the savior of the world. Think about that for a moment. Knowing the person was going to betray you, and you still wash their feet. And you still break bread with them. You still fellowship with them. Knowing they're gonna plan on they're planning on writing you out and letting everybody know where you are. Imagine that conversation where Jesus says, Do what you're gonna do, but do it quickly. So when we talk about that word, no, it's got so much meat on the bones. It's got so much depth other than just a simple, oh, I know. Yeah, 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 no. Now, imagine this. Imagine your ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, or ex-husband, or ex-wife, and somebody else, they meet somebody else. And then they happen to come to you and go, hey, you know so-and-so? And you go, so <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know them. I know them quite well. Yeah. Because there's this, there's ex, um, experiences, there is a, there's history, so to speak. It's in that history that your personal involvement tells you everything you need to know. To where you can see this person with somebody new and you can already assume, okay, they're not going to make it. They're just not going to. Why? Nobody said anything. Why well, the person changed? But you know the person. 
So we're talking about a more in-depth knowledge of the word to know. And in that, even by revelation, there are some things that we don't know when they, 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 they threw Jonah over the side of the ship because they're like, what's going on? What's going on? And so by throwing him over the ship, when, I'm sorry, before they did that, they cast lots, they gambled. They rolled the dice, so to speak. And by rolling the dice, it was to be revealed or to be made known who was the one that was causing all these problems. And then it was made known that it was Jonah. And then they threw him off the, off the side of the boat. So that's also a part of Revelation, coming to know more about God. And a lot of times people don't understand who God is. They don't understand his power. They don't understand his love. They especially don't understand his mercy and grace. All they know is what they have heard somebody else say. And so then they base their own theology and doctrine based upon somebody else's experience. And it doesn't work that way. Remember when Jesus, or when the seven sons came and said, they said, come out in the name that Paul preaches. Come out. And Jesus, and so the demon goes, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but I don't know you. That's not that's not in the essence, that, or you might say it's in the, the connotation of, uh, of, of um, a connection, but that person's name, their 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 exploits, their their exampleship was unknown to these spirits. In other words, you know, had they been evil, then the demon would say, "Come on, sons of Sceva, come on, I know you guys, I know, God, stop, y'all, stop, stop, I know you guys." He didn't even know them, which means. They have done absolutely nothing, not because of what they've done bad or good. They didn't even recognize these men. Now, how was it to the kingdom of God, even to the spirit realm, whether good or evil, that God doesn't know you and the enemy doesn't know you? That's telling something. Because what they said was, in the name that Paul preaches, come out. So where the demon has got to acknowledge, okay, we, we, we understand that, but who, who, who are you? I don't even know you. That's something. That is something. So as we get deeper into the relationship with God, there is a, um, uh, um, I, I want to use a more modern term. You can see the friends list. And by looking at the friends list, you can say, oh, they're friends of so-and-so. And then you can kind of go, oh, I'm friends of so-and-so. And, -so. and I, I love it because like on Facebook, you can kind of see mutual friends. And so you can say, uh oh, they're friends with this person. Oh, okay, whoa. Okay, and now you're basing your future communication with said person based upon who is in their friends list. There are some jobs who will say, oh, we want to welcome you. you got all the qualifications. Can we see your Facebook list, please? Can, can you give us your, your, uh, your username? Because they want to see who you know and what you've been doing, how you act. I thought that was profound. I thought, like, it's not like a base of privacy, privacy. Well, you know, it's either that. Or you come to invite this person to your home or to your place of business and they begin to steal from you or they begin to destroy your property all because you didn't check their friends list who said basically, ha ha, you just got out of jail, good to be home. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's always interesting. It's always good. And I, I'm, I'm going to say this because it's, it's a real life situation uh, to where uh, a sister was uh, looking to... Uh, uh, meet some guy, and in, in that process, she did go to meet the guy, and all of his friends said, oh, nice to meet you. You don't want to be with this guy. No, 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 go, just leave, just leave, just go, just go. She heard it the first time, didn't receive it, but just heard it, but then when things went crazy, went sideways, would go on to say, oh, they were right. They were so right. I should have listened. To which I replied, yeah, you know, it's it's when one person says one thing, you can kind of take it for what it's worth. Two people, maybe three or four or more, yeah, it's probably a fact, a true fact. In fact, when they broke up, people were actually going, you know what? I'm so glad you broke up. I'm so glad. And I'm thinking like, they're actually telling, that his friends are telling me, he goes, yeah, his friends are telling me, I'm so glad you, and I'm like, wow, man. A 
few months later, they get married. I kid you not. I kid you not. So, based upon the Bible says some water, some plant, some water, but God brings the increase. There is that constant r rhythm of no, 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 no. And this person still said, but yeah, 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 yeah. They know this person. I don't know the person. They know this person. And if somebody who knows them tells you don't be with them, I would just tend to listen because they know. They know. You're not. They, you're not this person. And... This person has said some crazy things that were to the, 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 the male part of this conversation. Said some things I, I'm just like flabbergasted. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, are you still married to this guy? It might work. Who knows? I've, I've seen worse situations. But if or something were to uh, not work out, I, I'd imagine that. Um, Disobedience, or the, or the, uh, ignore, avoiding or ignoring what is said, will be a far greater teacher than hearing firsthand. Because sometimes we we're just hard headed. We gotta learn our way. We gotta learn hard hard way. Like Doctor told you, when kids, when you tell the kid, "Don't touch the stove," you're not prophesying you you will be burned. You are stating a warning. If you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. You were, you were declaring a command, don't touch the stove. And then you were giving the consequences. If you touch the stove, you're going to get burned. So if you touch the stove, you can't say, God is judging me. No, God's not judging you. God warned you. God instructed you. God led you, advised you, counseled you not to. You did it. Therefore, you are now dealing with the consequences of your actions. That's different from judgment. So along these times, when we read Psalms 24, Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. He's not talking about Christian people. He's talking about the goyim, the, the, the Gentiles. They will see your God show up for you. Why? Because you know him intimately. By revelation knowledge, with the assurance that God is alive. That being said, Nahum 1 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows, yada, them that trust in him. So, therefore, to know him is to be known by him. To know him is to be known by him. Now, there may be some people, I'm, I keep using Facebook because that's a perfect analogy. You can see somebody, maybe it's a fan or a sports uh, person you follow or an actor or a singer or a musician, whatever case may be, and they may put a post up and then you may heart it or like it or say something to, oh, awesome, no, 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 or it was some, you know, some great, great, great sermon, whatever it is that you reply. That person may not reply back to you. But when they heart your comment or say thank you for that, you know, for, for saying that, doesn't it feel like, oh, they acknowledged me. They they really feel like they, they answered back. It's like this this the coolest thing. Like, wow. They hit me back up. And I, 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 it was so funny because, oh, um, what is that girl? Um Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan. It was on a uh, uh, what's that app called? Chat, chat. Oh my gosh, Clubhouse. It was on Clubhouse, and Lindsay Lohan had it started in a room. And um, oh, who was that brother? The brother who's, he does the um, uh, dancing with the, not dancing with stars. Uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, the buff brother. Uh, oh man, it's on the tip of my tongue. He was on Fridays. Oh, uh, are you talking about Terry Crews? Terry Crews, yeah. Terry Crews was also on this call, 
and there was a comment that was made, and I, I made a comment, and then Terry Crews goes, hey, that was a great word. Thank you for sharing that. And so like, he kind of privately did that to me. I'm like, Terry Crews has made comments to me. Oh, my God. Like, no, I don't, we don't, we don't, I don't know him. I was, I was just rather taken back by he acknowledged something I said, and then he kind of acknowledged me by, you know, commenting me to me and saying, you know, thank you for sharing what you did. So I'm like, wow. And then, then and Lindsay had hearted something that I said. And so, I, you know, not that I'm thinking like, okay, I'm part of the elite class in Hollywood now because I got Terry Crews and Lindsay Lynn. It was just something that what they did. So there was that, that, that open door to where they acknowledged who I was. And I was like, my poo-poo don't stink because I got Lindsay Lohan part. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just feel good, even though there really wasn't a, not a knowing. There was a beginning of a knowing. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about allowing that to grow, allowing that to mature to where there's what? A relationship. There is a knowing. There's an intimacy. And Adam knew his wife. Uh, Cain knew his wife. David knew his wife and bore a son. And so we see these, this, this word knew or knowing, which is yada, meaning the intimacy part, the relationship part, the part that brings revelation. And the more you read, uh, you read the word of God, the more you understand God's word, the more of him, who he is, becomes more alive in you. And then he becomes to know you based upon your worship, your praise, your intercession, your uh, demonstration of, of acts and, and service and blessing and, uh, um, you know, of, uh, intimacy, those levels, I was going to say soaking intimacy, those levels that where the relationship begins to grow. So God is saying, I will be your stronghold as, I, as you trust in me. I'm getting to know you more, too. It's a two-way street. It's not just you see somebody, see something, and you heart, 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 heart. You know, I, I really hate what social media has done to the degree that you feel that if you say something and got less hearts than something you said last week, you feel that you need to up the ante just to get the hearts. I mean, who, who cares about the hearts? Who cares about the likes? It's all about the personal relationship and what you do over the long term. You can't sit back over the years and tell God, what have you done for me? Well, that one post I got got me 15,000 hearts. So, yeah, but, I mean, that was, like, a lot, you know? Like, so, I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's more than just getting a like. It's more than just getting a heart. It's about getting the personal relationship. It is about, if Terry Crews has said, hey, brother, give me your number. Let's talk. Let's, let's, let's break bread. Let's, uh, let's have dinner and talk more about this. Da, da, da. Then we've got something going. Now we're building, we're getting to know each other. So, again, back to Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. The way we get to know that he is God is by what? Spending time with him, realizing that there's absolutely nothing you can do in your own physical strength, your own power, your own knowledge, your own wisdom, and your own abilities. There's absolutely nothing but to let it go, drop your mouth. Ah, for those of you who got here late, the, the when we see be still, the root word to be still is rafa, which means to heal. And the more bro broken down, it's talking about the head and the mouth that drops open. Like this. Ah. By doing so, you can receive the medicine. So you can't receive the medicine like this. Oh, so just kind of, you have to let it go what? Drop your, drop your mouth. Ah. And receive. So that's the word, the word rafa. So I'm sorry, the word be still means to be healed, to get healed. So, get healed. There's nothing you can do about it. And have that relationship with God, knowing, knowing he's going to come through for you. Why? Because, oh yeah, you know him, but now he knows you. That's the key. That's the key. Getting to know God is one thing. Having God getting to know you is another. And there is a difference. Or simply put, Psalms 46.10, be still and stop worrying. Drop it and let it go. You know that you're in a relationship with me, and I won't let anything bad happen to you. Because I am God. 
I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. And if you look at from the Hebraic stating, he's saying that because God is going to use you to God for God. In other words, you will be the catalyst for God being exalted. They're going to see, and, and what this basically is talking about is talking about when God begins to uh, get, get Israel uh, going through the, you know, the, the um, uh, surviving the plagues and then going through the desert and uh, crossing the Red Sea and then having wars and fighting Goliath and all these things. And all of a sudden people are starting to say, wow, their God is awesome. So God is saying, check this out. Just calm down. I, I, I Stop. I got you. I got you. For all the people who don't know who I am, they're going to see who I am from our relationship. Good afternoon, everybody. The world, world will, I will be exalted in the eyes of the world when they see what I can do in you and through you. Oh, I will be exalted because they will realize there's no way Andre could have done this in his own strength. There's absolutely no way Diana and Bradley could have ever accomplished this well, had it not been for God. And then the people who don't know who God is will say, "Wow, how did you how did you swing that? How did that happen for you? I want to know your God. I want to know your God like you know your God." The problem is we don't know our God like we're supposed to know our God. We know of Him. But we really don't have that. The DMs of God in our DMs talking about, hey, let's have lunch. Let's let's get together and, and do something. You know, it's really quite interesting. The Sadducees and Pharisees wanted to uh, uh, have engagement or meetings with Jesus to find out more about him. We're talking about the Sadducees and Pharisees, the most religious sects at that time in Israel. And if you were to gather all the people in Israel and the people would say to the Sadducees and Pharisees, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? They would say, well, no, not really. No, not really. And someone's going to go, oh, I had lunch with them. And they're going to turn around. You know what they're going to see? They're going to see a prostitute. And she's going to say, yeah, we had lunch together. What? God wouldn't talk to the religious folk, but he talked to the girl. Everybody shamed. Everybody scorned. Everybody ridiculed. Everybody abused. May we be like those who say, I know him. We had lunch together. He paid. That is the importance of relationship, of knowing, knowing who God is. And when you know who God is, when you begin to hear some doctrine or theology that doesn't quite, you know, it's like, like me, you know, <laughs> some of the things I teach. You've never heard it before, so it sounds wild. It sounds crazy. It sounds out there. But then you go check where? In your nowhere and go, Lord, is this is that for real? Is that, can this be true? And you're going to get that peace within your nowhere. And you're going to know, that's right. He does do these things in that way. Why? Because there is a relationship. There is a knowing. There is a personal connection there's an intimacy be still stop worrying drop it and let it go you know that you're in a relationship with me and i won't let anything happen to you because i am god i will be exalted among the heathen I will be exalted in the earth, and nothing is going to keep me from you. Yada, yada, yada. Any questions or comments?
Amen, amen, amen. Understanding the finished work of the cross was something I was not fluent in. I didn't understand the finished work of the cross. I understood barely hanging on. I understood I'm a sinner who is vile and wretched, and only when the end of age comes will I finally get that redemption and uh, the victory that I'm looking for. I had the notion or I had the mindset that um, I can never strive for perfection or attain anything other than a glorified servant um, and that everything I said and do forfeited my place in heaven. I kind of grew up that way, kind of like just still listen to my kids because that's the way I was taught. And I'm like realizing like, oh my gosh. So my view of who Christ was, was different. It was different then than, it, than what it is now. I'm in a different place. I know who my God is. And yeah, I mean, you, you, you travel around the world, you, you better know who your God is. But in that, the assurance and the personal connection I have with God just gets reinforced every day. Every day. I know when his voice is speaking to me. I know when I've done wrong. I know when I need to apologize to my wife. I don't, wow, I, okay, I can hear her scream from upstairs, she's doing a dance, I, <laughs> I know that when, um, I know when he's saying thank you to me, I know when he's uh, guiding me and leading me, and it's in these things where the relationship just keeps growing, it just keeps getting gooder and gooder, the disciples had three years, but they had everyday connection, we, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, have, well, we have every day, but they had that personal you know, back breath, temple popping, you know, beard growing knowledge. We have the spiritual knowledge on the inside. They had that that experiential uh, knowledge where they can tell you they can read they can read and go, no, he didn't do that. He didn't say that. No, you know, you, you know, or, you know what I mean? Like he's, they've got that personal or that. Oh, I remember that day. Yeah, I remember that day. And it, it is so it's so beautiful. To where you know, I am, not that I'm jealous, but I'm, I'm more jealous of uh, Elijah um, from what he saw. But if if I were to be looking from a position of you know, coveting what they had, um, David, I, I've got my I got my issues because the, the boy he, he went through some stuff, and I, I hope the guy I never go through the stuff that he went through. But on the same token, I love what God did in through him for him and through him. It's beautiful, but more or less. Every one of the patriarchs had a personal connection, personal knowledge of who God is. And I love it because when God says to Abraham, stop, now I know. That word know is a different word than the yada, personal. That is more of like the uh, confirmation. You have now confirmed. Nothing has been revealed, but you have confirmed. This is what I'm talking about when it's like a aha moment. Like, wow, God, you, wow, you're amazing. Oh, my gosh, you're so amazing. It is in that that God wants that relationship to grow. So even when you know things are getting chaotic, things are getting crazy, things are getting out of control, you can, God can still tell you, shh, God, God, shh. Nothing is good. Who am I? Who am I? I'm God, right? You know when something happened to you? Right? Right? What, you know that I can pay your bills? What, you don't think so? You, you know that, right? Okay. You know me, right? You know I come through for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're going, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, then don't worry about it. You know, because of that, everyone who looks at you based upon your bad credit, based upon your bank account, based upon uh, your, your, work, your work history, watch what I do. Watch, just watch. Watch. Everyone around you, will be amazed and they will come to you and want to know if they can have the same relationship with God that you do. God is ready to bless you. God is ready to increase you. God is ready to multiply you. God is ready to empower you. Why? Because you've got a relationship and he's going to use you 
to bring the world back to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. For truly, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice, and we shall be glad in it. It is in this day, God, that we trust in you, knowing that you are able and exceeding to do above all that we can ever ask for and imagine. Father, we thank you, Lord, in this day, Father, that we have and live and move and have our being in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new now in the mighty unmatched name of jesus and father we thank you we thank you lord that even though we may look at our bank accounts we may look at our savings we may look at our gas tank we may look at our cupboards and go uh oh and start to feel a little bit anxious a little bit nervous a little bit uneasy but then we rest and know we rest knowing who you are who we know you are to be and what you have done for us in the past. And then so then we know by personal relationship, by personal intimacy, by revelation and the assurance based upon past experiences and testimonies that you were able to get us through this situation. So Father, even from our own physical bodies, we drop, stop, and go, ah, to receive your healing. Based upon our resources, our income, our wealth, our blessings, we stop and go, ah, to receive your blessing. And we thank you, Lord, that you are our stronghold. And we trust in you. We trust in you, knowing that you're not going to let us go out. Let us go down, quit, surrender, or throw in a towel. Because somehow, somewhere, some way, Father, you always seem to make a way where it seems to be no way. It is in this, Father, we put our trust in you. And we say thank you, not just because that we know you, but because you know us. We love you, God, because you first loved us. We know you because you know us. And together, May our relationship grow, and may your name be exalted in me, and then through me, and through us all, in Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions or comments? Just know, God loves you. Yada, yada, yada. And when that happens, who's going to be the next millionaire? Pamela. <laughs> amen and amen. <laughs>